our next presentation, the impact of bridge deck overlay activities using NBI data. Uh, we have Casey Rafter, who's a vice president with QuickBond Polymers, and Nick Pierce, who's a bridge preservation engineer with North Carolina DOT. Uh, this is funny, it's a little bit of deja vu going on here. Uh, those of you that have been around for a while may remember, Tim, what was it, maybe seven or eight years ago, uh, Tim from North Carolina uh, gave a presentation with QuickBond on a, on a similar system, and this was a great one. Uh, we, we, took the, we took what we learned from that presentation home and started implementing ourselves, so uh, very interested to see kind of what the, uh, the update here is. But uh, let's, uh, let's welcome Casey and Nick. Guess we're all the way to, okay. All right, so I guess uh, we're gonna pick up on, you know, what happened from the time Tim presented to, uh, to now, and uh, Casey pointed out that uh, some of our work has not been captured, I guess, in our MBI data. So we all know uh, deterioration goes up and bridge uh, condition scores go down, and so we specify a uh, preservation activity, right? And we expect that the deterioration then goes down and the condition goes back up, but uh, in practice, is that always true? Uh, I guess Casey pointed out that it's not. So uh, we quickly pulled a, uh, a little sample population of about 400 or uh, 104 bridges, which is about roughly 30 projects that we've done probably starting around 2016, I think, uh, and looked at the data from those structures where we just did PPC overlays. And uh, Casey pointed out that uh, it's not only, you know, PPC that this may happen, but uh, it's, it ends up, some wearing surfaces end up being a, sort of a ghost in our MBI data, whether it's in the 108A uh, coding or uh, code, uh, or it's um, the 510 element. So it's, it's how, I guess, your state captures that information. So we do both uh, element, well, we've been doing element inspections since 2012, and of course the old uh, 108 recording, uh, but I guess PPC did sort of not get captured because uh, the way North Carolina treats that, uh, we typically remove a portion of our deck and we put back the same amount, right? And so when we do that, the way we read the definition we were just treating that as uh, a zero for code um, 510, and I guess that then makes uh, PPC sort of a ghost. And uh, in 108, there is not, unless you either classify it as an epoxy or you do it as a modified concrete, there's not a way to capture it there. So again, a ghost. So the snibby, as uh, Casey pointed out to us, he was kind of actually asking originally, so how do you intend to handle moving your data into the, into the uh, new snibby? That actually now has a wearing surface uh, item for identifying PPC. So if, if you're not familiar, PPC is more of a, uh, a thick polymer overlay, um, so you wouldn't, necessarily capture it with a, a thin resin uh, 108A type 5 uh, code. And then again, it's, it, it kind of is more similar to um, code 3, which is th thicker like LMC or other types of overlays. But it just wasn't getting captured. Um, you know, we use, when you put down PPC, you're putting down uh, a crack sealer, you're doing the repairs of any uh, spalls or delaminated areas before you put that back down. So, you know, you really are treating the deck and you're hoping uh, that you're ending up protecting the deck, bringing things back to, because you're repairing any of the uh, defects and you're sealing it. So you're, you should be bringing things back up to a condition state one. So that should be identified in your element inspection uh, criteria, and then, you wanna capture it? I can't remember, next slide, or is it this slide? I'm still doing Still me, okay. Uh, yeah, so we were hoping that you would see conditions come back to a condition state one, uh, maybe even 
uh, capture it in a 510 so you're aware that uh, you know, there's a wearing surface out there and I guess in the future to identify it as PVC to be able to uh, quickly go through an inventory and capture where are my structures with that type of overlay. Okay, so the process for, you know, once a preservation activity like a PPC overlay has been completed, uh, the process for documenting that is very important as well. If you do an activity and it doesn't get documented property, you don't really get points for doing that activity in the data set. So, you know, we wrote down ideal, I guess this is an ideal way of looking at it, um, but it would mainly consist of knowing who's doing what, um, when are they doing it, and what exactly are they doing within the uh, you know, raising of a condition state, adding a layer for an element, um, and then even beyond to the NBI, NBI GCR uh, for the deck itself. And the important thing is to have consistency so that all your divisions across the state are doing the same thing. Uh, your consultant inspectors know what they're doing with respect to the state's, uh, you know, internal forces for inspections. So ultimately, and again, ideal condition, CS1 for the wearing surface, CS1 for the deck, and a GCR for the deck of a seven would be what you're trying to get out of a project because you believe that this material can provide that in the end. Uh, so Nick sent over a spreadsheet to us that has the list of 104 bridges and it has structure numbers. And you know, he said, you know, I pointed out some things about the NBI um, information or the, or the element level information not being correct. And I, I didn't know that at first. I figured we've been doing PPC overlays for a few years now. Like, I'm going to contact the DOT and see if we can just tell everyone we've got a bunch of, you know, NBI ratings of an eight across the board. And that wasn't the case. So at first, I was like, crap, what is going on with this? So we had to look through every single bridge and see, you know, what, what is going on. Um, <clears throat> so we looked at the last 10 years of data, 2013 to 2023, um, and pulled up the, this is just the deck condition rating. Um, and in the yellow is the year that the bridge was marked to have a PPC overlay. And then the changes in colors are going to be anything from a drop since the overlay, staying flat, increasing, things like that. So we want to establish like a PPC time in a general condition rating, if there's a correlation there. Uh, you know, verify performance, validate the inspection report flow. Uh, this is what we found in those bridges, just, just raw right out of the, the Excel file. Um, about half the bridges were uh, NBI deck rating of a seven. Um, it, by deck area, about half, and then about half by deck area um, stayed flat from what they were before the overlay was triggered to have been installed, you know, was indicated to have been installed. So we have to figure out what's going on. Is it bad data? Is it the overlay's fault? A process thing. Um, so I went through um, on my own into InfoBridge because, you know, I don't have access to like bridge management systems that the states have access to, so I've got to poke around in InfoBridge all the time. Um, so if anybody hasn't used in InfoBridge, I think it's a really useful tool. Um, I use it quite a bit, but I converted their state structure numbers into the InfoBridge format, dumped it in there. Now I can go through the process of looking manually at every bridge in Google Maps and figuring out, is there an overlay on there? You know, is this, is this accurate? Um, the date of the earliest install, you know, the earliest year with an overlay, and we can start to line up, first of all, is that install date accurate in the yellow, you know, cell, or is it a different date? If so, why? What's going on? Um, is there a 510 layer turned on or not? What's the condition state of the elements that are involved? Things like that. So an image of Info, InfoBridge, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with it, um, this is just, you know, you pick the state, dump in, I think you can do 30 bridges at a time, and you can scroll through, and this is the, you can look at the NBI data, you can look at NBE data, you can look at it by year. They have some different graphs that show you, uh, you know, the drop in condition state or the drop in the NBI rating over time. So I just went through bridge by bridge and pulled all this information in there to try to figure out, you know, the information on the sheet, what's behind it from an element standpoint, and how did the overlay impact not just the NBI general condition rating of the deck, but the condition state of the elements, of the deck element and of the wearing surface element. Uh, there's also, what's nice in InfoBridge, there is also a, a little Google Maps um, window there. You can click on the top right-hand corner expand it and you can zoom in and do all the fun Google Maps stuff. So I was able to see, and, and you know, I've got a pretty good eye for it by now with PPC overlays, but I was able to get in there and see um, throughout the years the, the course of PPC overlays being installed to validate some of this data. So what do we find? 
Um, we found <clears throat> nine bridges that are on that list do not have a PPC overlay as far as the February 2023 um, Google Maps. And we learned that that is because the structure number, um, the yellow cell saying that it has a PPC overlay, that's tied to the award date of the contract, not the actual installation date. So that's important to know that that's the reason the rating didn't change for a year or two. Sometimes it did change right away, sometimes it didn't change. Anyway, nine bridges there. 75 bridges did not have the 510 element layer turned on. Um, and like Nick was saying, you know, if, if it, the overlay is brought back to the you know, previous finished grade, it was considered as part of the deck element in the way that North Carolina tracks that element, um, which is fine, but it just explains why that layer is not on there. 10 bridges um, had a, a general condition rating on the deck less than a seven, but 95% you know, condition state one for both the 510 and the deck. And once you have high 90s you know, percentile for condition state one, as long, and there's nothing like, it wasn't like 5% condition state four or something, but once you have these really high uh, element ratings, you have to wonder, well, why, why is it a five or why is it a six in the NBI? Like, give yourself the seven, uh, you're paying for it. And then the 17 bridges didn't have NBI data since 2017, and I believe those are like cities and counties that might not have had to report those. And again, that's okay, but it, it, it helps to draw out what some of these you know, anomalies might be um, in the process and then address the process of actually you know, reporting on these improvements along the way. Um, the biggest correlation that I found in this search was that the year that I can see the overlay actually installed in Google Maps seemed to correlate very well with an increase in the element of the deck, that condition state. So if it was a 30% condition state one and whatever beyond that, if it went up to 98, that year of that improvement correlated to seeing the overlay visibly in Google Maps. So that's useful, hopefully, for other states. Um, and again, like going back to the SNBI thing, you know, the, the, the new reporting requirements are gonna require that you do report on other overlay types that are not in the traditional 108A code in the traditional NBI coding guide. So if you have other overlay types that are going to be incorporated into the SNBI, start gathering that information now because in a couple of years, you'll have to dump that into a translator and then report on it. Um, you know, it could be a little hectic, especially if you have a couple different wearing surface types that are maybe being tracked differently even uh, in the way that, that that process is being done. Um, what was wrong with the overlays themselves? So out of the uh, NBI general condition rating of a five, there's six bridges. Um, two weren't installed yet, so they weren't, they weren't in there. Two weren't inspected yet. One was just a partial overlay, so it wasn't the whole bridge. Um, and then one remained a five since the PPC overlay was installed. So, and you know, I'm not trying to say like, oh, look how good PPC is doing, but for, for us, for, from the manufacturer supplier side, I wanna know how our overlays are doing. Like, what if they're all doing terribly and I'm telling everyone they're doing great? Or what if one bridge is bad and I can go look at that bridge and make a recommendation? You know, you guys don't have to do the legwork for that kind of recommendation. This is something I can go drive or look in Google Maps and say, hey, I noticed this one problem. We'll give you material to fix it or whatever, you know? And then going on from there, 56 bridges and uh, general condition rating of a six. You can see uh, the numbers there. And, you know, 20 decks CS1s greater than 95%. Um, a couple were eights. Not a lot of states go to eight after a rehab or preservation treatment on the deck. You probably can, but not a lot do. Um, and then observed in Google Maps, I didn't drive every square foot, but I did find one pothole. It was a pretty bad blowout, probably this big or so. Um, some small joints from um, not saw cutting before opening traffic, that's a contractor kind of thing, but you can see it throughout the years, so it was a fun exercise for me. Um, so potential adjustments that North Carolina DOT was considering you know, in, the, in the recording process would be to use the, the 510 layer for all the wearing surfaces without respect to finished grade, without respect to the original thickness of the deck so that they can track that element as a, you know, that's not a monolithic concrete deck, it's a different element. Uh, and that will allow the turning on of that layer to indicate the installation year of an overlay or the increase of a condition state in that layer from a three to a one to indicate some change in that overlay. And then you can track better the install year. Next would be to, to use agency-defined elements, but you know there's only a couple of years left for that, so Snibby's gonna be changing the way that ADEs are used. Um, I don't know all ADEs, but I do know for polyester concrete, you can't use an ADE for a polyester concrete anymore, if you are, because it's going to be out in the open as a code itself. 
Um, but it might be a good way to gather things now to put into the translator. Um, and then, you know, updating the, the inspection policy so that things are triggered. Um, if your bridge condition goes up, your NVI rating should be going up and the elements and things like that in between. So making sure that there's some logic there to capture that improvement. And then beyond that, training and communication, um, you have to get the, the inspectors involved in the, uh, the structures, what is it, inventory and appraisal? Yeah, it's our yeah. group. So getting them involved. And then, yeah, just make sure you're getting your money's worth for the ex the ex these activities. And then you can really compare and do forecasting and projections with you know, a lot more reliable data. But I don't want to say that North Carolina is doing a bad job either. Like, we've looked at a lot of different states. Um, California's not here, so I'll pick on them for a second. But they have like 2,100 bridges with PPC overlays, and they're coded all kinds of ways. Um, it's captured in an agency-defined element, but there's, it's not connected. So we're working on helping them connect that into their system so they can really see what's going on. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out. Anyway, thank you. I'm going to, before I give it to Robbie, no, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to just say that it, that's always a challenge with preservation activities, right? We know that they don't always increase. I mean, it does, but then some people would say, well, the other, the deck is still underneath there and the deck maybe didn't change. And so now you've got a wearing surface, but it's a challenge to make sure that we, we somehow understand that that still is positive, even if the condition doesn't go up a lot. It still prolongs the life of the bridge, does all of the good things that preservation does, right? Yeah, and, so. and we actually saw a huge difference between our condition state scores and our uh, element conditions. So element did actually improve. Our general condition scores kind of stayed flat, and we're like, what's going on? <laughs> I guess so far, Georgia, we haven't used PPC. Oh, we, we, we did one, one trial. <laughs> It didn't go that great, but like again, uh, is um, um, when you say they're coding eight as far as the deck, some state like is North North Carolina coding is eight once once the PPC is done. Only two of them were eight. Yeah, but states like New York will will bring a deck to a general condition rating of an eight. New York will, but okay. you know you know. Yeah. We leave it up to the inspectors. If there's no underside conditions that would warrant it staying right. flat or uh, you know, maybe only improving one point, then yeah, they can take it up to an eight. It's up to the inspector. Okay. And if you Are fixed they? every defect then, and it's 100% CS1, then what's the NVI rating that you would give to that is a good question. Yeah, because I think Georgia, we, o we only code brand new bridges eight, and some brand new are not even eight, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so. Um, so it, it's interesting. We will try PPC. We'll see, but like I think we'll be coding at seven instead of eight. So, yeah. All right. Let's thank Casey and Nick uh, one more time. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.